Welcome to the Z1 Analyzer. In this video, we are going to talk about scatter plots and specifically how you create them and how you display them in the Z1 Analyzer. Uh, the topic of analyzing and getting information out of the scatter plot, it will be done in a different video. So this one is just about how you uh, view them in the analyzer and how you can create your own scatter plots to show in the analyzer. So to start with, uh, we have this display here with um, a lap loaded and I'm showing on the left one scatter plot, which is my steering versus lateral g-force and one on the right, which is an RPM versus speed. Now up here we have the scatter plot menu and the Z1 analyzer comes with four predefined scatter plots, uh, three different gearing versions and a lateral g-force. If you want to display one, you just select it from this menu and it will show up in the main uh, analyzer screen. So right now, if I click this X, and this is the same for any uh, uh, box, I will hide the uh, scatter plot. So to show it, I just come down and choose the one I want to display from the menu, and uh, they reappear. If you want to close all the plots that are displayed, you can just choose close all plots from the scatter plot menu, and they all get disappeared. So these are the predefined ones. Uh, you can create your own, or you can edit these predefined ones. So to do so, I would choose Edit Scatter Plot, if, and I get this uh, list here of all my existing scatter plots. So I'm going to choose the steering versus lateral G forces and put that right there. So this shows you how this scatter plot is defined. The scatter plot is basically uh, two axes, an X and a Y and the X shows one data channel and the Y plots another data channel and you uh, then get the plot based on what you've selected. So uh, right now you can see in this window here that the uh, I can give it a name so steering versus lateral g-force. The name must be unique uh, so you can't have two scatter plots with the same name. So on the vertical axis I'm going to plot lateral acceleration and from this drop down you can choose all the data ch uh, channels that are available within the analyzer. And that vertical axis lateral acceleration relates here on the scatter plot to the lateral acceleration and you have the positive and negative acceleration values. And then on the horizontal axis I have my steering angle which is this axis here and again negative on the left and positive on the right. And if you're doing a scatter plot that does have a negative and positive, you'll see this uh, thin line right here showing you where zero is in your plot. Now, each axis, you can specify the number of decimal places you want, um, which right now we have zero. So you see with zero uh, on the vertical acceleration, you have a couple here which are the same. So we have zero, one, one, two, two, three, three. If we change this, and let's say we want one decimal place, and then we're going to save the scatter plot. It says OK. Now on the left here, we have a bit more precision. So it's 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, etc. So you want to set this to make sure that the scatter plot is displaying the information uh, as accurately as you want it to display. So let's go back to the edit. Let's go back here again. Uh, the next thing to look at is uh, the number of tick marks. So right now we've chosen six. So if you see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the number of tick marks on the axis. So how precise do you want this to be? You can increase this or decrease this. So say we change it to 12 and we save the plot. So now on the left, we have many more um, tick marks on that axis. So for this, uh, I think six is a little too many. I'm sorry, 12 is a bit too many. We're going to go back and we'll change this back to six because I think that looks better for my personal uh, taste. The next thing is the scale. Um, if you set scale to auto, then the uh, Z1 analyzer will use a scale which it thinks is appropriate based on the data channel you have used. So for this uh, scale, auto is perfectly fine for these purposes. 
Um, so I'm going to leave it there. So one thing we want to, I'm going to show you here is the scale. So on the vertical axis we have RPM and on the horizontal axis we have speed. So this is providing us with uh, the scatter plot that looks like this, where each of these is the individual gear we are in uh, based on the color. And then how fast we're going and what RPM that's happening at. So you can see there's a lot of space here which isn't used and a lot of space here which isn't used. So since we set the scale to auto, the uh, analyzer will say, okay, well, I'm going to go from zero to the maximum RPM and zero to the maximum speed. But we don't necessarily need that. What we really want is probably around 4,500 RPM to 9,000. So on the y-axis, we can set this to a minimum to maximum. So we will say our minimum is 4,500 and our maximum will set to 9,000. Now on the speed axis, we don't really drop below 45 kilometers and we go up to 275. So the scale will set this again, a minimum to maximum, and we will say it goes from 45 to 275. And then we're going to save this scatter plot. So now it's been redrawn and we have uh, more detail because we're only using the part of the scatter plot that we're interested in, the 4500 RPM and up and the 45 kilometers and up. The final part of creating a scatter plot is a color channel. So this is optional. Uh, if you don't want to use it, you can set it to none, but we are going to leave it with uh, speed as our option, which is right here. Uh, the reason we want to use speed uh, as our color channel is because then when we're plotting our acceleration versus the steering angle, we can see uh, how fast uh, the car is going at what location in the scatter plot. Now you can choose the number of uh, color buckets from 1 through 10, uh, and that's basically the number of divisions that you're going to have in your um, the color channel. So with speed, uh, 10 buckets is a good number because you break the speed up into 10 distinct sections. And uh, if you were using something like gears, this one only has, uh, I think it's six or seven. So now each of these uh, color buckets can have its own distinct color. You just click on it and you can change it to whatever color you want to use. And then the last part of the color channel is the legend, um, which is this part here. Um, and you can use extents, starting, or ending. So extents means that you want to put the low value and the high value of each bucket. So in this case for speed, it makes sense to have that because you know that this goes from 69 to 89 miles an hour. Uh, sorry, kilometers per hour. And this one goes from 89 to 110 and then all the way up. If you were doing a uh, gear one, you don't really need the uh, legend to tell you it goes from gear 0 to gear 1, gear 1 to gear 2, because you're just in that gear all the time. So for that, you would choose either the starting or the ending. Um, and starting puts the, uh, the legend at the bottom and ending at the top. So in this case, we just have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so now we have a couple of traces displayed here. If we zoom in on a trace, and we can do that by either double clicking or clicking and dragging, you'll notice that the scatter plots also zoom in. Uh, so now we only see the data that is in the zoomed in section of the trace. So the number of um, points on the scatter plot is less and you can see them in, uh, more easily. And the same thing on the RPM versus speed scatter plot. And then once we double click to go back out, we get the entire uh, scatter plot and on both of them again. Now you can click anywhere in a scatter plot and it will show you the point on the track that that dot happens to be associated with. And if we have a track map and we click on the track map, the little cross here, there's a uh, X right here and there's also this white X here moves to wherever we click on the map. And then likewise, if we click on the scatter plot somewhere, the car dot right here will move to that location. 
And then you can also play back the, those scatter plots. So if we hit play in the track map, as we progress around the track, you can see the white crosshair moves based on where we are on the track and what data item you are looking at. So as well as playing the lap back with the play, pause, or stop buttons, you can also use the left and right arrow keys to step through the data one um, step at a time. So every time I click the right arrow key, you'll see that right here, this is moving and the same thing on the other scatter plot right here. It's a bit hard to see with the colors, but uh, that's moving as well. And then you can see on the cursor location, the timestamp and the feet move. So you can use the left and the right arrow keys for position moving through the scatter plot, as well as through any trace that you might have up there as well. So we hope this has been a useful video and a good introduction on how to create and display your own scatter plots in the Z1 Analyzer. Uh, we'll have more videos soon on uh, scatter plots and histograms, so stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and like this video.